Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. A few days ago, I received my seven inch HDMI touch display. I ordered this from Banggood and I'll leave a link in the description. It took me two and a half weeks to get it from China, which is not that bad. This is the 1024 by 600 resolution model. They also offer an 800 by 480. I definitely recommend going with the higher of the two. This is gonna go inside of a small PVC cabinet that I've been building. I just haven't had time to do it lately. Hopefully in the next two weeks I'll have it done and I'm going to be using this. For now I'm not sure if I'm going to use the Raspberry Pi or the Latte Panda or even a Banana Pi. I'm not sure but I have a lot of single board computers to choose from. Let's go ahead and unbox this. What I want to do is test this out on the Latte Panda and the Raspberry Pi 3. So in the box uh, I guess these are drivers, but the thing is this does not require drivers if you're running Raspbian. All you need to do is add a few lines to the config file and the touch automatically works through the USB. And the resolution should be fine also. I don't own a DVD player or a DVD drive or a CD drive in any of my computers, so this is junk to me. I'll never know what's on that. Next up we have a micro USB cable. This will power the LCD screen and enable touch. Some small standoffs if you want to mount it somewhere. And a super thin, very short HDMI cable. This will come in handy. And here's the LCD screen. So there is a film on here, like a protector. If you take that off, you can get a little clearer picture. It is touch. And the cool thing about this, it doesn't require an inverter board. Everything's built into the back of it. There are two micro USB ports that are used for touch and power. You can just use one of them. That's all I'm going to be using. HDMI and an on and off switch. So what I'm going to do is actually hook up a Raspberry Pi 3 and the Latte Panda and see how this thing looks. So with this, all you need to do is edit a few lines or add a few lines in the config text. And this is RetroPie 4.1. I'm going to plug in my controller now and see how it looks while playing a couple games. So the touch function is not going to function within RetroPie. And I loaded a couple things on here. So I'm not sure if the camera's doing it justice. It is a very crisp picture for being such a low resolution. It's a very small screen, so if you stand back just a little bit, it looks perfect. It looks HD from here. And I know the camera's not picking this up correctly. But yeah, RetroPie works in here. I'm gonna move on to Raspbian and see how that works. So here we are with Raspbian Pixel. I actually switched to a different camera trying to capture it better. I don't think I did a great job. We'll check uh, the internet out here. Give it a second to load up. If you run this, you know how slow it is to load up your internet browser the first time. And I don't think I'm connected to Wi-Fi. That sucks. Either way, this seems pretty precise. And if I remember correctly, there is an application built into Raspbian that you can configure your touchscreen. You can calibrate your touchscreen. See if I can click that little tiny X with my fingers here. There we go. And it does seem pretty dead on. I'll just tap this, opens right up. So if you configure it, it's gonna work even better. 
it's doing its job and the fact that I don't have to install any drivers is a big plus. Let's go ahead and move to the Latte Panda and see how it works in Windows 10. And here we are with Windows 10. I wish my camera would pick this up better because the screen does look really good for being such a cheap 7 inch screen. The only thing I did was plug in the USB touch cable here and let's see if it works. It works. We have on screen keyboard right there. Hopefully I don't pull up porn. I just typed in something random. Okay, I'm not even connected. Sweet. Yeah, so overall this really works great for what it is. And it'll work with several different uh, single board computers. I really wish you guys could see how nice this screen looks. Like I'm not just trying to play it up. It's a really good looking screen. Give it a little tap. So yeah, that's it. I mean, that was just a quick look. I just wanted to check it out myself. It seems to work great. It looks good. And the touch is actually very, very responsive within Windows, at least. So I just want to show you um, my cabinet real quick that this is going to go in. So this is far from done. I mean, obviously, as you can see. But um, this is PVC. It's called Paylight. And it's a really good little design. I have a ton of pieces that go with it. So we can secure this from underneath. But this is the cutout I was sent for the 7 inch. It comes with a 7 and a 9. And I'm going to look for the link on this. I'm not sure if the guy sells them anymore. It's a cool little kit for 40 bucks, And I'm actually just hot gluing it together. The screen should fit right in here, but as you can see, I'm definitely going to have a gap on the bottom. That could be filled in with some more of this pay light or something else, but this does come with a marquee section and a back plate, so I think this is going to look really cool set up. I was going to go for a 9, but the 9 inches are like close to $100. 7 inch will be fine for me sitting in this little cab, single player, play some Neo Geo on this thing. I really appreciate you guys watching. If you could, hit that like button and subscribe. I'm going to leave a link to this 7 inch screen. It is from China, but I'm in the US, I'm in North Carolina, and this came in two and a half weeks. Definitely worth the money for me, because I wanted something without an inverter board. I didn't want to have to mess with that. This is just HDMI and power. And if you're not using touch, you can power this from another power source. Like always, Thanks for watching.